Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews, where we explore the world of fountain pens, ink, and paper. And today, as you can see, there's a lot of red going on, also a little bit of French going on. This is Girbans Rouge Grenat, and that is Garnet Red. And I like a nice red ink. And I, when I go looking for a red ink, I look for a couple of different things. Either I want a really nice, true red, like a red red, like that pen there, the Scrivener Classic in red. Uh, something that would match that well, which is the case today, or I'm looking for something that has a deeper, richer, darker red, like an ox blood, something like that. So I've always got my eyes open to different reds and shades of red, and particularly a nice true red. I do not care for a weak red, a, a washed out, watered down red. And I'm not talking about pink. I mean like a watered down red, like, uh, for example, Pelican's Brilliant Red. I got nothing for that. Uh, just doesn't do the thing for me. I like a richer, more saturated red. So we have here this nice granite red. And one of the things that I noticed about it right off the bat was that it reminded me of a pomegranate seed red. I know it's supposed to be garnet, but those colors are really close together. And when I first wrote with this ink and it had that nice, rich pomegranate red, this moves straight to the top of my list of favorite reds, right up there in the region of Ox Blood or Monteverde's Ruby Red, which I really enjoy as well, or Diamine's Red Dragon. I like those kinds of reds, but this one has that richer pomegranate or garnet color. So we're going to put it through the paces, and I want to show you how it acts on paper. This is Claire Fontaine. We'll look at several others at different price points and things like that, and everyday copy paper, that kind of stuff. We'll see how it performs. We'll do a chromatography as well and see what makes up this red ink and we'll check it for water fastness spilling stuff all over it to make sure that you know whether or not you can dance in the rain with this ink so let's get started all right first this is clairefontaine paper and this is the spiral where i keep all of these ink tests because i like clairefontaine paper it gives me a really good standard across the board of ink so it's what i use from a few ink reviews back going forward. And on this paper, you can see that this ink looks fantastic. You've got here some really nice shading from a from this deep red that you see in the wetness test up here in the light part of that G or the top of the R, for example, into that deeper garnet red where the light starts to fade at the bottom of these letters. And it looks really good. So Clairefontaine paper really brings out the shading properties of this particular ink and no feathering whatsoever on this paper. There's nothing on the back side either. There is a preview of the next ink to come. So if you're somebody who uses Clairefontaine paper, that ink's going to be fantastic. The pen I'm using today is a Scrivener Classic. Really like these pens. This is with a steel medium nib. Thank you very much, Scrivener, for this pen. And I love that red enameled finish. Does that not just look fantastic in this lighting and look at the match of this ink and this pen. I don't always have to have my pens and inks matchy matchy. Sometimes I like them to clash even, but this is just an absolute perfect pairing both in appearance and this pen really likes this ink. Now, a lot of you use Rhodia paper. So how did it do on Rhodia? As you can see, it also brings out that shading. You can really see it as I made the round on that R. This H has just shading and the G here all over the place. Really, really good. Of course, no bleeding, feathering, or any issues like that at all. Then we have here some hammer mill. This is just 20 pound weight paper. I know some of you like a heavier hammer mill for fountain pens, but this is what I got out of the laser printer, and I've used this here in the reviews before. And as you can see here, there is no real feathering, no issues that way. It looks good on this side of the page. Then you do have a bit of ghosting, but no bleed through. I'd fold that over just to see if there would be any, and there was no problem there. So a little bit of ghosting. You can definitely use it one side on the hammer mill paper. Then a favorite of mine, a little bit of an off-white paper, and that is a Yush. A little bit harder to find in the U.S. market at the moment, but a paper that I really enjoy. And you can see here that it does have that shading again, no feathering issues like that, and nothing going on on the other side either. And another off-white paper that I really like the color of is this ivory paper from Imshoy. This is their notebook that I just recently reviewed. If you haven't seen that, check it out. There'll be a link down below in the description. 
And here again, you see some of that nice shading coming through. No feathering issues here either. And just a little bit of the ghosting on the other side. No bleed through at all, but a little bit of ghosting. But that's been true of several inks on this paper, but I still like it and it's a good and expensive choice. Then, a cheap option for those who live in the land of Walmart. Uh, this is their dot grid spiral made in India. And I love this for just cheap doodling and note taking and outline writing and brainstorming. I keep these at my house and my office all over the place. Couple of bucks is all they are. And even here, wonderful shading looks really good and nothing to be frustrated about on the other side. And then in the premium side of things, and this is still not dry because I had actually forgotten to catalog the ink in my little ink notebook here. This is a Lockby sample notebook I got a long time ago that is the old Tomaway River paper. Everybody just stop for a moment of silence. And of course the ink here performed admirably as well. Shading looks fantastic. Of course it writes really well, really brings out the personality of the ink. And uh, we'll do another swatch here in a second, but as you can see there, really, really lovely red. And then this is the True Red Composition Notebook. And as you can see here, again, no feathering, really nice shading here as well. And no bleed through or issues on the other side. And this will go for a lot of other big box composition notebooks. So long as they say made in Vietnam, you're going to get the same performance. All right, before we go any further in the review, let's talk about packaging and bottles and things like that. First, the packaging. I think that they do a really nice job in their packaging. It looks really good. It catches your interest at the pen store. It seems like I am far more likely to come home from a pen store with ink from Giraban than I am on the internet because... They do a good job with packaging, just kind of pulls you right in there, doesn't it? And then there's the bottle. So the bottle ha is, is it's pluses and minuses, right? For one thing, some people really love that it has this little pen rest, which this pen actually does fit. Many pens do not because they're too big these days. But a slimmer, more classically sized pen is going to be able to rest on this or a glass dip pen, really good and handy for that. Again, depending on the design of the glass pen because it is just a narrow channel that they have there. It does have some challenges, though. Whenever you are getting low on ink, you're going to have to resort, most likely, to either an ink miser or a syringe. It is a shallow bottle. holds 30 milliliters, like a lot of other bottles. But it's hard to get to those last little bits of ink. One of my favorite blue inks is their Sapphire Blue. And uh, had a few different bottles of that. And I'm telling you, when you get to the end, you better have a syringe. All right, now that brings us back to our Claire Fontaine. And what we're going to do here is a live swatching of this ink. Do our first pass. This will look a little bit different, most likely, on this paper. And our second pass. And a third. Since this is an ink that has quite a bit of shading, you're going to see a good difference between that first, second, and third pass. And while the big splotch is drying, how about we do our regular writing dry test? Five seconds, still pretty wet. Ten seconds, still pretty wet. Twenty seconds, eh, we're starting to see some progress. Thirty seconds, now we're nearly there. All right, and one minute and you're done. Now I will say, you know, this is Claire Fontaine, so the coating that they use in their paper, it does take just a little bit longer to dry than some of these other papers that I've shown you. I would think Rhodia is very similar to this paper in terms of dry time. But for example, the Indian notebook from Walmart, the dot grid one, or the paper made in India in the spiral or the composition notebooks, all of those things are going to be faster to dry. All right, now here are the results of the water test. My apologies, I didn't film this because first the mic died and I had to replace it with another one. And then I forgot to put do not disturb on on my phone while recording and uh, you don't need that phone call on here while the water was doing its test. Anyway, is it water fast? No. Uh, as you can see, most of this is washed away, but there is a little hope. You can still read the word water. You can still read the word test, and most of the grid is still there. So there is hope that you would be able to make out what you wrote. But like a lot of other inks that don't purport to be documental, this one does not, you don't want to write with this ink anything that you're going to want to have in 30 years if there's a risk of it getting wet or anything like that. Or if you just write and, you know, 
in your notebook and you're out in the rain after we're leaving the coffee shop, just know you might lose your notes. That's true of most fountain pen inks, so that's not anything too uh, disastrous or anything there. Next up, I have the chromatography. There's not anything too uh, crazy shocking about this one. It's mostly red. You can see as that washes out into shades of pink, there is a slight hint of bluish gray right in here. And then you do have a bit of gray black right there at the line that stayed behind. This is the original mark that I made and that stayed behind. And that's part of what gives it this nice, darker, richer hue. So nothing surprising, but I think these are always interesting. All right. So to wrap it up, I do think that this is a really beautiful shade of red with great shading properties. Again, as you can see in the writing here, just for your info, it is made in France. The bottle is 30 milliliters. If you want to figure out the price per milliliter in July, the price per bottle in the U.S., and I checked jet pens for this because that's where I got my bottle, was $12.56. So a pretty reasonable price, not the cheapest, not the most expensive, kind of right in the middle of the 30 milliliter bottle market. And for that, you get a nice quality, rich red ink. But what do you think? Is there something you like better than this? Is this one that now tickles your fancy? What do you think about this ink? Share that in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for sharing and liking. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? God bless you. Have a great week.